I want to share with you a, a story bago natin pag-usapan yung ating topic for today in social psychology. So here's how the story goes. An elderly man in Phoenix calls his son in New York and says, I hate to ruin your day but I have to tell you that your mother and I are divorcing. 45 years of misery is enough. So yung daddy niya tumawag sa kanya, sinasabi sa kanya na maghihiwalay na sila ng kanyang mami. Nung narinig to, nung anak, sabi niya, Pop, what are you talking about? The son screams. We can't stand the sight of each other any longer, the, the old man says. We're sick of each other and I'm sick of talking about this. So you call your sister in Chicago and tell her and then he hangs up. So sabi, sabi nung daddy, tawagan mo yung kapatid mo sa Chicago para sabihin na maghihiwalay na kami ng mami mo. So what happens next? Frantic, the son calls his sister who explodes on the phone. Like heck, they're getting divorced, she shouts. I'll take care of this. She calls Phoenix immediately and screams at the old man. You are not getting divorced. Don't do a single thing until I get there. I'm calling my brother back and we'll both be there tomorrow. Until then, don't do a thing. Do you hear me? And hangs up. So sabi nung sister niya, pupunta sila nung kapatid niya doon sa bahay nung daddy at mami nila para pag-usapan yung divorce na pinaplano nung daddy niya. Nung binaba yung phone, anong nangyari? The old man hangs up his phone and turns to his wife. Okay, he says, they're coming for Thanksgiving and paying their own fares. Now, what do we tell them for Christmas? Ibig sabihin, gawa-gawa lang pala nila yung divorce thing na yon. Ginawa lang nila yon, sinabi lang nila yon para umuwi yung kanilang mga anak for Thanksgiving at bayaran yung kanilang sariling mga pamasahe. So the reason why I opened our discussion for today is because we are going to talk about persuasion. So that story that I told you, meron po yung kinalaman sa persuasion. Persuasion is the art of getting what you want. So kapag may isang tao kang gusto mong gumawa ng isang bagay that you want him or her to do, then that means you need to persuade that person to do what you want. Kaya nga ang tawag sa persuasion, the art of getting what you want, pero nagbago na ngayon yan. No? Naging science na yan of getting what you want. Naging science ang persuasion when social psychologists began systematically studying kung ano ba yung mga iba't ibang mga effective ways on how to persuade someone. So nung nag-aral na yung mga social psychologists ng persuasion, scientifically, paano ba tayo magiging effective persuaders, naging science of persuasion na siya. And by the way, no, let's not underestimate persuasion because we do persuasion every day. Halos kahit saan ka tumingin, talagang merong nangyayaring persuasion. It happens in courtship. Kapag nanliligaw ka, you are persuading that person that you are the best choice na sasagutin niya. Kapag ikaw ay nasa courtroom, yung mga attorney tuwing meron silang hinahawakang kaso, they are persuading the judge that they make more sense compared to their uh, compared to their enemies, di ba? Kapag ikaw ay nasa religion, di ba? Whenever you are presenting the gospel at sinasabi mo sa tao na kinakailangan na niya magbago, that he or she needs to accept the free gift of salvation, you are also doing persuasion. At alam nyo ba, in the Bible, merong special mention ang persuasion, di ba? The Bible expects us to be good persuaders, especially of the good news of Jesus Christ. Sabi nga po sa 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15, In your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have, but do this with gentleness and respect. So kapag mayroong taong nagdududa sa gospel of Jesus Christ, ano ang utos sa mga Christians? We need to learn how to persuade properly para ma-expose yung mga taong ito sa katotohanan of the gospel. But I think ang pinaka-obvious na field na talagang maraming persuasion is none other than the media. ba diba, kaliwat kanan, kapag nanood ka ng media, you will be persuaded in one way or the other, especially kapag nanood ka ng mga commercials. Every commercial that you see, do you realize it is an attempt to persuade you? Pinerpersuade tayo ng mga commercials na bilhin yung mga produkto nila tulad ng sabon, ng kotse, ng pabango, 
every commercial that you see, tatandaan ninyo, it is an attempt to persuade you to buy the product. Kaya naman, if persuasion is so important for our life, we need to learn a very important skill, how to persuade effectively. Kasi lahat naman ng tao pwedeng mag-persuade, but not all people persuade effectively. Meron mga tao nag-persuade, pero palpak, or hindi effective yung pag-persuade nila. But before we talk about the basic principles on how to persuade effectively, let's first differentiate conformity from persuasion. Conformity, ito yung topic natin from our last video. Ano ang pagkaiba nito sa persuasion? Let's first start with the common. Ang pareho sa kanila is both are processes where we try to influence or change the attitude or behavior of people. So whether you are you are inducing conformity or you are persuading a person, pareho tayong nag attempt na magbago ng pag-iisip o ng actions ng tao. Diba? Huwag ka ng manigarilyo o magsuot ka na ng color red o bumili ka na ng kotseng ganito. Pareho nilang ginagawa yun, no? conformity and persuasion. Pero saan sila magkaiba? They differ in the following. Pag conformity, the actor is the majority. So yung nagpapabago ng action at ng attitude nang gagaling sa majority, the group. And remember, based on our definition of conformity in the last video, there is no direct request being done by the group. So yung group nandyan lang siya, pero the group naglalabas siya ng mga social pressures, indirect social pressures, para yung mga tao susunod sa majority. So in conformity, the group is not directly asking the people to conform. It's just that meron lang mga ginagawa yung grupo that makes people want to conform to the majority. Pero yung persuasion, iba ang storya. Sa persuasion, yung gumagawa niyan is the individual. So kahit walang grupo, kahit isang tao lang, pwedeng, pwede na magkaroon ng persuasion. And usually in persuasion, the direct request is very aggressive. It is very direct. So, mag-isa lang, pwede nang gumawa ng persuasion and at the same time, yung kagustuhan ng taong yon na magpabago ng isip ng isa pang tao, it's very direct. Talagang directly sasabihin niya sa'yo na magbago ka na. Directly sasabihin niya sa'yo na iwan mo na yan lumang produkto mo, bilin mo na itong bagong produkto ko. So, in persuasion, we are more direct compared to conformity. So, again, I think mas madaling tandaan ang pinagkaiba lang ng dalawa is who is doing the process. Kapag yung grupo ang gumagawa and it's indirect, conformity yan. Pero pag ang gumagawa is an individual person and the approach is very direct, then that will be persuasion. Now, for us to be able to better understand how persuasion works, kinakailangan familiar tayo sa mga smaller components of persuasion. Apat yan. The communicator, siya yung nagsasalita, siya yung nangungumbinsi. We have the message, yan yung sinasabi niya o yung mga argumento niya kung bakit kailangan mo sundin yung sinasabi niya. We have the channel, kung ano ba yung ginagamit niya para sabihin yung message niya or paano niya sabihin yung message niya. And number four, the audience, yung mga taong nakikinig doon sa persuader. So if we want to learn how to better persuade people to for them to do what we say they need to do, kinakailangan eh isa-isahin natin yung mga components na yan. And that's what we are going to do. As we go along this four, pupulot tayo ng mga effective strategies on how to be more effective persuaders. Punta ka agad tayo sa communicator. The communicator is the person who is doing the persuasion. Siya yung nagsasalita. Siya yung nangungumbinsi. According to studies, merong mga qualities na dapat meron ang isang persuader o ang isang communicator for that person to be effective in persuasion. Ito po yung top 3 qualities na dapat meron sila. Credible, trustworthy, and attractive. Anong ibig sabihin ng credible? Ibig sabihin po ng credible, eh, the person or the audience sees you as a person na malinis ang record or should I say, meron kang expertise sa sinasabi mo. So, for example, nagbebenta ka ng sabon o nagbebenta ka ng dishwashing uh, 
dishwashing liquid, kinakailangan yung magsasabi na bilin mo yung mga pr product na ito are people with credibility, such as, for example, doctors and scientists. Kaya naman kung mapapansin ninyo, in most commercials, talagang hindi mawawala yung mga nakalaboratory gown na mga scientists persuading people to buy the products. Actually, ang pinakamay hatak dyan is yung kanilang pananamit, no? yung kanilang laboratory gown. Kasi doon na i-establish yung credibility. Yung nagsasabi sa akin na maganda ang produktong ito ay mga eksperto, mga nag-aral sa medisina. Kaya naman, in most commercials, sila talaga yung laging ginagamit to persuade people that their product deserves to be bought. Another quality na dapat meron ng isang uh, communicator para maging effective is trustworthiness. Ibig sabihin ng trustworthiness, yung gagamitin mong tao sa pag-persuade sa audience is someone na mapagkakatiwalaan. Yung wala siyang bahid ng kasamaan sa society. Hindi siya corrupt. Hindi pangit yung image niya. One good example of this would be Tito Boy Abunda. Diba? Si Boy Abunda in the field of media, napakalinis po kasi ng kanyang pangalan. No? Wala siyang kinasangkutan na matinding controversy or corruption. So most people look up to him. Kaya po si Tito Boy, marami siyang commercial. The reason why kinukuha siya is because yung kanyang malinis na pangalan, yung kanyang trustworthiness. So kapag ang isang produkto ay pinopromote ng isang tao na merong trustworthiness, then people are easily persuaded to buy the product. And last one, number three, and I think ito yung pinaka-obvious in the field of um, advertising, ang isang persuader nagiging effective kapag maganda o guwapo. No? Yan yung tinatawag nating attractiveness. Talagang laging merong hatak yung itsura ng tao sa pagpursuade sa mga tao to buy or to do something. For example, itong mga commercials natin sa alcohol, bakit karamihan ng commercial sa alcohol ay eh magagandang mga babae ang ginagamit? Because these persuaders, because they are physically attractive, guys who is the target market of this alcohol are very easily persuaded. Kasi uh, mabilis ma-persuade yung mga guys kapag yung gumagawa ng request o yung kapag nag-persuade is magaganda. Okay? So, yan po yung labanan sa paggawa ng commercials. No? Kapag Kapag maganda yung model, maganda yung nag-persuade, maganda or guapo, most likely, people are going to be persuaded. If you want to be more psychological about this, meron pong nangyayaring halo effect. Ibig sabihin, natatransfer mo yung kagandahan ng model, yung kagandahan ng artista doon sa produkto. So, maganda o guapo yung artista, therefore, natatransfer mo yung quality ng artista na yon doon sa produkto. So, every time that you see the product, yung mind mo iisipin niya na maganda na rin yung produkto simply because yung nag-promote ay maganda at guapo rin. Yan yung tinatawag nating halo effect. And when you do, when you sense that the product and the endorser are both attractive, you are more likely to be persuaded to buy the product. At alam nyo po, nung matagal na po itong pinag-aaralan in the field of advertising, in the field of social psychology, talagang malakas ang hatak ng beauty in persuading people. Because people tend to believe that beautiful people are good people. And good people deserves to be followed. Good people deserves to be listened to. Yan yung tinatawag nating beauty stereotype or the beauty is good stereotype. Maraming beses nang napatunayan yan in social psychology. And the thing is, this beauty is good stereotype starts in childhood. So, yung mga bata, mga bata pa lang, talagang meron na silang ganong pag-iisip na ang isang taong maganda, kapag nagsalita siya, dapat mong sundin because that means the person is good. And the person is good simply because the person is physically attractive. So, meron po talagang hatak yung physical attractiveness in persuading other people. Number two, me, we have the message. Yung message naman, ito yung sinasabi ng persuader. Ito yung mga punto. Ito yung mga arguments ng persuader kung bakit ang tao dapat makinig sa kanya. Okay, so the main goal of the message is to show to people that the that the message 
make sense. Follow what I say. So, yung mga sinasabi mo, dapat, uh, sa pagdating sa utak ng mga tao na nakikinig, it should make sense in their minds. Because if people sense na yung sinasabi ng persuader makes a lot of sense, then most likely, they are going to be persuaded. Pero ito ang tanong, no? What can make a message make sense? Halimbawa, nag sumusulat ka na ng mensahe para ma-persuade yung mga tao na gumawa ng isang behavior, ano ba yung mga paraan para masabi nila na yung mensahe mo is making sense? According to social psychologists, there are three possible routes para ma-program mo yung message mo to be making sense. Nandyan una yung root number one, the central root. It makes sense because your message sounds logical. Pinapakitaan mo sila ng numbers. Pinapakitaan mo sila ng statistics. Pinaparinggan mo sila ng mga testimonies from other people. In other words, sundin mo yung mga bagay na sinasabi ko sa'yo. You have to be persuaded with the things I'm saying because what I'm saying makes sense. Look at the numbers. Listen to what people are saying. Kaya karamihan ng mga produkto, karamihan ng mga commercials, nagpapakita yan ng mga numbers, ng mga statistics. 9 out of 10 housewives choose this dishwashing liquid. Diba? Uh, 99.9% ng mga germs na mamatay kapag ginamit mo ang sabon na to. You know? Tapos gagamit tayo ng mga kwento ng iba't ibang mga tao na naka-experience doon sa produkto na binebenta. So again, in central root, you are persuading people, you are hitting their logic. Hinihit mo yung logic nila, no? Sinasabi mo sa kanila na dapat silang makinig sa iyo because what I'm saying is very logical. Here are the numbers, here are the statistics, kaya dapat lang makinig ka sa sinasabi ko. And I think one good example of this would be those people who are selling insurances. 'Di ba karamihan ng way nila para makumbinsi ang tao no, na bumili ng insurance is the central route. Talagang bibigyan kanila ng mga statistics, ng mga numbers, ng mga estimates para makumbinsi yung tao na, na bumili ng insurance. Which is, I think, very good din naman. No? Kasi nga, we want our decisions to be based on logic. And this is one way for you to convince someone to make a certain decision. Ipakita mo na yung behavior na gusto mong ipagawa sa kanya is something logical. At lalabas lang yan kapag sinamahan mo ng mga numbers, sinamahan mo ng mga statistics proving na yung sinasabi mong gawin niya is very logical. Pero pwede ka rin gumamit ng peripheral route. Sa peripheral route naman, yung pag-persuade mo sa tao, dinadaan mo naman ito sa emotions. Dinadaan mo sa feelings ng tao. Yung mensahe mo, yung mensahe mo, pinoprogram mo siya to inspire, to be funny, to make people in awe, para maawa yung tao, or in some cases, nag induce ka ng fear para sundin nila yung sinasabi mo. Speaking of fear, one good example of this would be kapag pinapersuade mo yung tao na tumigil na sa pagbili ng sigarilyo, di ba? And I think this is being done at the present. Yung mga kaha ng sigarilyo, merong mga pictures ng mga taong nagkasakit ng matindi because of smoking. This is an act of persuasion. Tama ba? We want to change people's attitude. We want to change people's behaviors. In what way? We want them to smoke less. As much as possible, we are discouraging them to buy this product. So, ito ang ginagawa natin. Ipaskill natin yung mga pictures na yan para hopefully, matakot sila, magbabago yung pananaw nila sa paninigarilyo. In some commercials, ang ginagamit naman nila is humor. Diba? Pinapatawa nila yung mga taong nanonood ng commercials nila para pag sobra silang natawa at pumasok sila sa grocery in the future, and they see the product, they will remember the funny commercial and more likely, when they do, tumataas yung chance that they are going to buy the product na naalala nila from the funny commercial. And of course, hindi mawawala dito yung sense of humor ng mga Pilipino na uh, nag-iisip ng mga unique names ng kanilang mga businesses. ba? So, ito po yun. No? Yung mga Inasar, 
pizza ng ina mo, adobo photoshop, again, all these titles aim to induce humor to people para ma-persuade mo sila na kumain sa mga restaurants na yan. So, after nilang matawa, mamaya-maya, mafefin nilang magugutom sila. So, makukuro sila kung masarap nga ma dyan, Then, that means you are effective in persuading them to to eat doon sa mga restaurants na yan. Pero, pwede mo rin naman i-combine yung dalawa. You know? Pwede yung combination of central route sa peripheral route. Yan yung tinatawag nating mixed Kapag mix, hinahalo mo yung yung logic pati yung emotions sa pagkumbinsi sa tao na gumawa ng isang behavior o para maniwala sa isang attitude. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, ang iPhone, ang Mac, magaling gumawa ng mga commercials that is mixed. Meron silang part ng commercial that is very factual. They present the numbers, they present statistics, pero meron din silang part ng commercial or ads that is very catchy. It, it's really funny. Like for example in this picture, di ba? So, ang factual dito, ang iPhone, it's all about privacy. At totoo naman yan. Di ba? Kaya sa, pag meron kang iPhone, marami kang mga passwords na dapat tandaan. Marami kang mga security measures na dapat talagang tiisin sa proseso ng pagkakaroon ng iPhone. No? Marami kang dapat iset. Kaya nga marami nagsasabi ang iPhone is itong maarteng gadget. But, kaya maarte ang iPhone because it is valuing privacy. But look at how uh, Mac combines that factual element of iPhone with humor. Diba? Yung picture sa kaluwa nagpapakita ng privacy inside the comfort room. Para yung mga tao matawa. You know? Kung ano ang ibig sabihin ng privacy. It's factual and at the same time, it's very catchy. So you can also program your message to combine the two. Merong factual side, meron din namang catchy side. Meron ding emotional side. So yun po yung tinatawag nating mix root. Now let's move on to the channel. Yung channel, this is how the message is being delivered. So yung communicator, siya yung nagsasalita. Yung message, yun yung sinasabi niya. Yung channel, paano niya sinasabi yung kanyang sinasabi. And according to research, there are many ways on how you can package your message para maging persuasive ka. Like for example, number one, personal. Ibig sabihin ng personal, kapag nagde-deliver ka ng message to persuade people, it's always better to deliver the message in the personal level. Ibig sabihin, ikaw mismo yung nagde-deliver sa kanila. They can see your body, they can see your mouth move, they can hear your human voice. Mas personal, mas persuasive. Kumpara mo naman kung nagpersuade ka lang ng electronically. You know, nirecord mo lang sarili mo, tapos sinihingan mo sila ng donation, that will be less persuasive compared to ikaw mismo, yung nasa harap nila, na nanghihingi ng donation. Another practical example here, eh, magigets ito ng mga nagdadrive ng kotse, no? di ba sa kalsada, Paano mo mapurpersuade yung mga kotse na pagbigyang ka sa daan? Most people, ang effective way talaga dyan para mapersuade mo sila is ibaba mo yung bintana mo and then ikaw mismo yung kumaway. And a lot of drivers do that. Pag talagang kailangan nilang sumingit, windows down, and then sila mismo yung kakaway. Ilalabas nila yung kamay nila or ipapakita nila konti yung mukha nila and then they are going to personally appeal to the car na pagbigyan muna sila. And you know what? Most of the time, it's effective. Kung ikaw naman yung nasa receiving end, nakita mo na na nagbaba ng, ng bintana yung driver at nakita mo yung tao na humihingi sa iyo ng request na pagbigyan mo siya, mahirap tanggihan. Kasi that person is now making the request in a personal level. Nakita mo yung mukha niya, nakita mo yung mga mata niya, nakita mo yung sense of urgency niya nung nilabas niya yung kanyang kamay para pagbigyan mo siya, mahirap tanggihan kapag yung appeal is very personal. Okay? So that's that's one way for you to make your message to, to package your message. Make it very personal. Number two and three, ito, pagsamahin ko na, according to research, one way, one effective packaging, one effective channel 
of your message to be persuasive is gawin mong repetitive at madaling tandaan. Repetitive and ease of remembering. Ang tao, more likely mapurpersuade sila kapag paulit-ulit nilang naririnig yung mensahe na gusto mong gawin nila and at the same time, madali silang maalala. And advertisers know this principle. Kaya karamihan ng mga commercials unang-una, paulit-ulit yan. Diba? Kaya dapat kapag ikaw ay isang advertiser, marami kang pera para pangbili ng airtime sa mga televisions and radio para paulit-ulit na i-play yung iyong commercial. But that's not enough. Kaya na kailangan yung message mo, i-package mo na madali siyang tandaan. Paulit-ulit na madaling tandaan. ba? Diba? Kaya karamihan po ng mga ads, nakaka-invento po sila ng mga words na catchy at the same time easy to remember. Yung mga salitang kisla puti. ba? Diba? Yung mga slogans na hindi lang pang pamilya, pang sports pa. ba? Diba? So yung mga bagay na yan, yung kapag nilalaro nila yung mga words, yan po yung ease of remembering. Madaling tandaan, kisla puti. Hindi lang pang pamilya, pang sports pa. Ulit-ulitin mo yan, then what happens is you are putting those ideas on top of their heads. In cognitive psychology, yan po yung tinatawag nating availability. Ibig sabihin ng availability, dahil sa paulit-ulit mong sinasabi yung isang message, at ang gaganda, ang kakachi ng mga terms sa ginagamit mo, people are more likely to think of these things. Tanggaling, kisla puti, labadami, okay ka ba dyan? hindi lang pang pamilya, pang sports pa. When people keep on thinking of these things, guess what? They are more likely to buy the products. Pagpasok nila ng grocery, yun nang maririnig nila inside their heads which will make them more likely to buy those products na napanood nila. So those are some practical applications on how you can package your message to be more persuasive. And of course, last one, let's not forget, kinakailangan din nating pag-usapan yung audience. Kung sino ba yung mga nakikinig. Sino ba itong mga audience na ito na madaling ma-persuade, di ba? Kinakailangan aalamin natin yung profile ng mga taong nakikinig sa atin when we are trying to persuade them. For example, sige nga, sino mas madaling ma-persuade? Old people versus young people? Highly educated versus lay people? Working employees versus college students? Sino dyan ang madaling ma-persuade? Ang sagot sa tanong na yan, yung sagot ng mga matatalino, well, ang sagot, it all depends. ba? Diba? It all depends. Ibig sabihin, walang one size fits all na message that will persuade everyone kinakailangan lagi mong itutugma yung mensahe mo, yung pagpersuade mo, depende kung sinong nakikinig sa'yo. In other words, your strategy depends on the audience. Kinakailangan ipapattern mo yung style mo sa pagpersuade kung, sino, kung sinong nakikinig sa'yo. Ano dapat ang packaging mo as a communicator? Anong route ang gagamitin mo? Central ba or peripheral or mix? Anong mga principles of the channel ba yung gagamitin mo? Depende ulit yan kung sino ang nakikinig sa'yo. Kaya nga, if you want to be an effective persuader and you are now trying to program your message, no? isa sa mga unang dapat alam mo sinong makikinig sa'yo. Diba? Matatanda ba? Uh, mga bata ba? Ano ba, yung mga, ano ba yung mga profiles nila? That's a very important detail to remember before you you plan how to persuade your audience. So, ano ba yung mga importanteng profiles na dapat alam mo? O, unang-una yung intellectual level, di ba? Yung ulo na may mga lamang libro. Iba ang approach mo kapag yung mga taong kakausapin mo, hindi naman ganun kataas yung intellectual level. Pero pag yung mga kakausapin mo may mga PhD, talagang mga experience sa eskwelahan, mga teachers, kinakailangan iibahin mo rin yung tono mo sa pag-persuade. Depende rin yan sa edad. Age is also very important. ba? Diba? Kapag yung makikinig sa'yo, teenagers, dapat iba yung presentation ng persuasion mo kumpara kapag ang nakikinig sa'yo mga senior citizen o mga manager sa banko na medyo nasa middle age na yan. And of course, the most important thing is the personal history. Actually, yung personal history, it applies more to one-on-one -on -one persuasion. Eh. You know? Bago mo kausapin yung taong gusto mong i-persuade, 
kinakailangan more or less meron kang idea sa kanyang personal history. ba? Diba? Na-experience ba niya yung martial law? Ano ba yung kanyang religion? Hmm. Ano ba ang klaseng childhood naging meron siya? When you know these personal details about that person that you are going to persuade, pwede mong gamitin yung mga details na yon in such a way na yung message mo e tatatak sa kanya. Magigets niya. Kung baga yung lengguahe na ginagamit mo in persuading that person, tugmang-tugma doon sa background ng taong pinur-persuade mo. So, that's a very important skill of a persuader yung meron siyang ability to read the audience and then from there, the persuader will plan out what's the best approach to persuade that person. So, ano yung mga lesson na pwede nating matutunan sa, les, sa, sa le, video na ito? I think there's only one that I think is the most important. Marami namang lessons, no? pero ito yung pinaka-importante. I hope you realize by now that the mind has power to influence or get influenced. Remember yung definition ng persuasion? The act of influencing an audience. The act of influencing an audience. So, ibig sabihin po, when you enter or when you do the process of persuasion, you have to understand that the mind has the power to influence or to get influenced. Meron kang kakayanan na ma-influensyahan yung ibang tao, pero wag mong kakalimutan, meron ka ring tendency na ma-influensyahan ng iba. Basically, life is about influence. A big chunk of our life, it's about influence. And I would say, I can connect this to the quality of our life, ba? Diba? Yung kalidad ng buhay natin, depende rin yan sa mga impluensya na meron tayo. Kaya nga, ito yung tanong ko, no? Just to close this lesson, what kind of influence will you make? ba? Diba? If you have the ability to influence other people, saan mo sila dadalhin? What kind of influence are you going to give them? The reason why we did this lecture on persuasion is to help you to become good in influencing. But hopefully, you are going to use that power to influence other people to influence them to go to the good way. Diba? Iimpluensyahan mo sila how to be better people. Iimpluensyahan mo sila to add value to their lives. Huwag natin silang dalen sa mga road, sa mga bagay, sa mga daan na mali. No, na ikasisira nila because again, you have to remember you have the power to influence others but that power comes with a responsibility sana influensyahan mo sila ng mabuti and one more thing, balik naman tayo doon sa kabilang side what kind of influence will you take? so what kind of influence will you make? what kind of influence will you take? ibig sabihin, sa part mo naman pwede ka rin ma-influensyahan ng ibang tao. And another application here is, you have to be choosy about what kind of influence will you allow yourself to go to. Remember, meron kang choice. You can influence others, but other people are also influencing you. You have a choice kung anong klaseng influensya yung papayagan mo sa sarili mo. And I really hope that the kinds of influence that you allow yourself to have are good influences. The Bible teaches us, For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. Ibig sabihin, kapag yung influence ang sinusundan mo, puro na lang tungkol sa flesh, puro na lang worldly, you will be corrupted. But he that soweth to the Spirit, yung nagpapa-influence sa mga magagandang bagay, sa ways of the Spirit, shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. In other words, to make this a uh, very simple passage, meron pong mga good influences and, and bad influences in this life. And as a rational being, the good news is we can choose what kind of influence will we take for ourselves. We also have the power to choose what kind of influence will we give to other people. And I really hope yung pipiliin nating influence is always the influence that can make the mind better. The influence that will help people, that will help yourself have a better mind. So that ends our lecture on persuasion. I hope you learned something. Hanggang sa muli.
sa susunod nating lecture on libreng sit-in here in social psychology. God bless.